When the war in Europe ended, the countryside and towns were littered with tanks and armoured vehicles, some knocked out, some disabled by their crews, and some abandoned through lack of fuel. The vehicles represented an amazing treasure trove of technology ripe for study and evaluation, particularly German tanks like the Panther, the Tiger and the King Tiger, which had reached the pinnacle of heavy tank design and armament. The victorious Allied powers took many examples of these tanks for testing, but some countries that had remained out of the war also took an interest in German tank design, and one of them was Sweden. Neutral throughout the war, Sweden was interested in integrating high-tech German advances in armoured vehicles into its own tank designs and ammunition designs, and Sweden wanted to obtain examples of German tanks for study. In 1946, a military mission was dispatched from Sweden to find, recover and ship examples of the top fighting tanks home. At the top of the list was the monstrous German Tiger II, or King Tiger tank. Many had been left on European battlefields, but how could Sweden get their hands on one? Of all the German big cats, the Tiger II was at the apex of tank design. The Germans called it the Bengal Tiger, or Königstiger, and like its animal namesake, it was big, rare and deadly. Only 429 of these 70-ton monsters were built between 1943 and 1945. With its virtually impenetrable frontal armour and long-barrelled 8.8cm anti-tank gun, it was a formidable opponent, though plagued by mechanical failures and an engine too small for its enormous bulk. Nonetheless, the King Tiger, as the Allies called it, was the ancestor of the modern main battle tank and an advanced design for its day. France was the obvious place to search for German tanks because of the very extensive fighting which had occurred in the country during the second half of 1944. The US authorities gave the Swedes permission to scavenge and put them in contact with the French army. The first place it visited was a tank depot near Versailles, where the French had gathered together many German tanks. There they inspected three Panther tanks, all in running order. So far so good but it was a King Tiger that most interested the Swedes. The French next took the Swedish delegation by road to Normandy. Near Vimoutier there was a King Tiger. The Swedish officers' enthusiasm soon turned sour when they approached the massive tank. It was a burnt-out wreck, fit only for use as a gunnery target, and was too far gone for technical analysis. They politely declined the vehicle and returned to Versailles. The next day, a meeting was convened, and the French army generously told the Swedes to pick one panther from among the three they had recently inspected. The selected tank would be a free gift from France to Sweden. The French also said that once a suitable Tiger II had been located, it also would be gifted to Sweden as a show of goodwill between the two nations. The Swedish delegation returned home in October 1946 with the panther tank, their mission still not fulfilled. However, in August 1947, the French contacted Sweden to inform them that a King Tiger had been located for them. It was at the town of Gien, south of Paris. The Swedes immediately travelled to France to claim their prize. From the beginning, it was clear that this particular King Tiger was a little bit different from the ordinary. It had an older, curved, pre-production turret, known as a Porsche turret, with a one-piece monoblock gun tube, a binocular sighting telescope, and armoured covers over the wading equipment. To which German unit this particular King Tiger once belonged has remained a mystery. Historians have suggested it belonged to either Panzerkompanie Funklenk 316 from the Panzerlehr division, or perhaps Schwerer Panzerabteilung 503, but both of these units had fought in Normandy, a very long way from Gien. It was of course possible that the French army had transported this particular tank to Gien as a war trophy. There were no identifying marks on the turret, except an S2 marked on the side of the hull. Another strange aspect of this particular King Tiger were the rear exhaust pipes, which were large and horizontal rather than vertical as standard on most models. The Porsche turret, one-piece snorkel for wading, and the monotube barrel suggest it was a very early King Tiger. 
The King Tiger was transported to Sweden and handed over to the P4 Regiment, or the Skaraborg Regiment, at Skövde, 265 kilometers or 164 miles west of Stockholm. It was put into running order. An internal inspection turned up a live German grenade on top of the engine, probably placed there by the departing German crew to disable the tank. The grenade had misfired, saving the engine from destruction. One initial problem the Swedes faced was damage to the running gear that left the tank unable to turn. It could only drive straight. In late 1948, the tank was sent to the Karlsborg testing area, 60 kilometers east. It was an extremely difficult journey. The Swedes used a turretless Sherman tank, a M26 Dragon Wagon, and a recovery vehicle to try to haul the tank for five days along forest roads. Also required a fuel truck, two cars for staff, and four motorbikes in column. In 1949, the Swedes began mine detonation and barrage tests using Swedish ammunition against the King Tiger. The vehicle was progressively destroyed and the hull was scrapped. The turret was sent to a firing range for target practice and also destroyed eventually. The gun was removed and sent to Bofors headquarters. This was scrapped, unfortunately, in the late 1980s, shortly before a museum was due to collect it. Today, only the original motor, the gearbox, and the rear hatch survive at the Swedish Tank Museum. Remember the Panther tank the Swedes were given by the French? Well, that's no longer in Sweden, though it does still exist. The Panther was used for tests until 1960. Then it was given to the Panzer Lehr Brigade at Munster. Restored in the 1980s, it is in running order at the Panzer Museum in Germany. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share and help support my channel with PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.